And back now to another top story we've been following all morning. Police in Florida are working to find Gabby Petito's fiance after investigators in Wyoming found a body matching her description yesterday. Brian Laundry is believed to be the last person to have seen Petito alive, and he refused to talk to police after about her disappearance before he went missing. For more on this, I want to bring in Jerika Duncan. Good morning, Jerika. You are outside the Laundry family's home in Northport, Florida. Have you heard from the Laundry or Petito families yet? We haven't heard directly from the Laundry family. You know, we tried to do a door knock yesterday and were told by police to get off of the property. But through an attorney, after that grim news from the FBI, an attorney for the Laundry family called the news heartbreaking and said that the family is praying for Gabby Petito's family. As for the Petito family, uh, her father has been very vocal and he's put out uh, statements via Twitter right now. This is a difficult time without a doubt for his family. And he even told us earlier in the week that no one could quite empathize or understand what that family was going through at the time when Gabby Petito was considered someone that was missing. Now that they have found, according to authorities, human remains that are consistent with that of Gabby Petito, uh, even the FBI asked the media, so to speak, to sort of back off and give them their time uh, to, to decide if they even want to speak. Um, but it's, it's horrible. I mean, this is a young girl that was full of life, the oldest of six children. Uh, her family, again, was hoping that just maybe she was out there in need of help and someone would find her alive. That's why they were so adamant about doing television with you know, all of the major networks, all of the local television stations. Uh, but it was sort of that feeling that he's even described as the worst uh, case scenario was that they wouldn't find their child alive. And, and that's the case now. So the focus turns to Brian Laundry. Again, we are near his home. This is where he was living with his parents and returned back from after going cross country with Gabby Petito. Uh, and his parents actually called police, even though they didn't want to talk. Um, they didn't make their son available to speak to the police, but they did call the police to say that he was missing. Uh, they made that call on Friday and said that the last time they saw their son was Tuesday. They told police that they believe that their son is in a reserve that's about 25,000 acres. Uh, so that is where police in this area have been focusing. They have helicopters, 50 agents, canines, all looking for Brian Laundry in hopes that if they are able to uh, bring him back home, if you will, because he is considered missing. Um, he is a person of interest, not yet a suspect, but a, a lot of people uh, waiting to see if that changes now that they do have what appears to be the human remains of Gabby Petito. But ultimately, police want to speak with him in hopes that they will get more answers as to how Gabby Petito died and what exactly happened. And that's what they've been working on since Gabby Petito was reported missing on September 11th. They've always maintained, police have always maintained that they wanted to speak to Brian Laundry, uh, just believing that he's going to be able to provide more information and answers as to what happened. And again, Drika, you're in Northport, Florida. You spoke to the Northport Correct. police spokesperson, which is right now the department yes. leading the search for Brian Laundry. What do police think happened when he entered the reserve or do they do they believe he's still in the reserve right now? I asked the spokesperson for the police department here if they believe that he's alive. And, you know, the answer that was given essentially is, we're working to find him. Anything's possible, but we're working to find him. Um, they're being a bit tight-lipped, if you will, about what they're going to share with us, the media, regarding an investigation um, that has brought people from all around the country to this small area of about 80,000 residents, all in search in the beginning for answers to where Gabby Petito is. Now that we do uh, apparently know, based on the FBI out of um, Wyoming, they still have this other person that they're looking to bring back to question. Uh, and I think it, it just becomes this sort of situation where no one really knows what to make of this other than it's strange, right? It's bizarre that someone who was on this trip with this young girl, this young woman, for four or five months all of a sudden doesn't have anything to say. Uh, and police believe, again, he returned back here September 1st. 
The last time that Gabby Petito's mother says she saw her physically through FaceTime was August 23rd or 24th. So it is very strange that he did not want to talk to police or provide any information. And I think that at the core is something that is sort of baffling to, to everyone. Certainly strange and, and certainly suspicious. There's an interview with one of Gabby Petito's close friends in your report for CBS Mornings. What did you learn about Petito and Laundry and their relationship from that interview? From that interview, the friend talked about there being some hints of problems in their relationship. Um, and, you know, we didn't get a chance to speak to her after hearing the news of the, the remains that the FBI found. Uh, so we are hoping to reach back out to her to just see how she's doing. But it's been a difficult time for those who, who know her, who knew this couple, uh, without a doubt, because there's finality in death. Uh, so to hear that those human remains appear to be those of Gabby Petito, everyone I think who, who knows her, is close to her, and that family is just trying to process their worst nightmare. Like you said, they were so willing to go on television and speak to us when she was missing, when they're trying to find her, now that it's right. come to this sort of conclusion. You know, now they need their space, their time to mourn. Jerika, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.